I can't do this. We have hit 100k subscribers! Thank you guys so much for helping me reach a thousand subscribers. It's just... It wouldn't have happened if you guys didn't share my previous video that is currently doing really well So thank you guys so much for sharing that video And I'm so glad that there are people like you guys out there who appreciate my videos But before I get into today's video, I want to thank Skillshare so much for sponsoring today's video Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people to explore new skills Deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity One of my favorite classes that I'm currently taking is Creativity Unleashed by my favorite YouTuber Nathaniel Drew where he teaches you to discover, own, and share your voice online. I personally find the videos so well made, yet so entertaining, informative, and engaging. Skillshare is created specifically for learning, so that means there are no ads, and browsing through dozens of courses and classes has never been easier. And they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow creativity wherever it takes you. And it's only less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The best part is that the first thousand people to use my link in the description down below will get a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership. Initially, I was wasn't sure how I was gonna make this video because I was really worried that it wouldn't be worth making and you know it wouldn't be as entertaining as the other one and I felt like the male beauty standards don't really matter and then I realized that I was basically feeding to the whole stigma of mental health and body image issues for males which is more of a reason why this video is so important to talk about. So we all kind of have an idea of what a handsome, attractive, ideal man looks like. But of course, beauty is subjective and there are so many factors that come into play when it comes to what defines beauty, such as culture, time of living, location, and country. And another major factor which I discussed more in my previous video is colonialism and how we generally have this desire for Eurocentric features. Black South Africans make up 79.6% of the population in South Africa. Meanwhile, white people only make up 8.9%. But the media representation in South Africa is primarily white models, which has also contributed to why skin lightening and bleaching products has become so popular amongst men and women in South Africa. Before the US and Spanish colonization in the Philippines, golden brown skin tone was considered strong and vigorous. But after the colonization, brown Filipinos and Indios were ridiculed, which has helped shape the desire for for Eurocentric features in the Philippines such as lighter skin tone and a high bridged nose. Over the years, K-pop has become a global phenomenon. These boys are so much to me. I know. Or to all of us. Yeah. And there is a huge emphasis on idolization of South Korean pop culture dominating in most Asian countries has helped to redefine ideal male beauty standards primarily in Asia. As I've discussed in my previous video there is a long history of Asians and South Koreans who desire the Eurocentric features but even so there are distinct male beauty standards within Asia and the West like how in Asia the flamboyant soft masculinity is desired whereas in Western standards it's more focused on being masculine. A tall, slim, but toned body with soft features, light, clear, glowing skin, sharp jawline, big eyed, and a tall, high bridged nose. Which is basically nothing much like your average South Korean or Asian guy. But a lot of these K pop stars, when they were trainees before they were famous, were quite unrecognizable themselves before cosmetic surgery, intense training, and the younger generation men aspired to look like these role models. The portrayal by Bollywood films, which is the biggest film industry, often portrays dark-skinned people as villains and rough characters. Meanwhile, the fair light skins are often main characters and heroes. The media favors and represents light-skinned people and ingrains this notion that fair skin is better. And as a result, quite often in countries like India, dark skins are commonly mistreated and called derogatory names. Which makes sense to why the skin lightening and bleaching cream industry is so big in a country like India, often with big Big celebrity endorsements. A 2017 study found that 1,992 Indians found that more than half said they were influenced by TV advertisements to appear lighter skin. And on top of that, most of these male main characters are always hyper masculine and extremely muscular, which again is so far from what the average Indian viewer looks like. Ironically, wanting to be white and have Eurocentric features in Asian countries is such a big thing. Meanwhile, back in the West, the ideal skin tone for Westerners is golden tan. Because 
because it's a status of good health, vitality, and exotic. It took me a while to realize that, that you wanted to be me. Muscular, lean, ripped, have a V-shaped body with a six-pack, big arms and chest, low body fat percentage, yet very muscular, chisel jaw, luscious hair, perfect clear skin and teeth, and of course to be tall and not below six foot. This man has none of those problems. He has men's health, the world's number one men's The globalization of Western media and Hollywood sells us this ideal beauty standard from movies and TV shows, magazines, posters, billboards, but the ideal American body itself has changed a lot since the 1870s to today. In the late 19th century, being overweight was a sign of wealth as one was able to feast and there was even a fat man's club in 1866 where you had to weigh at least 200 pounds to be a part of the club. By 1930s, the excess weight was associated with lower class and Hollywood actors were becoming more fit but still average size and this became the ideal. By 1960s, there was a countercultural wave rejecting the mainstream ideal where it was common for rock stars to have long long hair and a skinny body and this became the ideal. But by the 1980s, the hyper-masculine gym-built body became popular. Bodybuilding and action stars having huge muscles became mainstream. It was also seen in action figure toys, comics, and superheroes. Body suits that were worn by these superheroes were getting tighter and tighter each year. They started putting fake muscles underneath the suits and actors were told to work out and gain more muscle, which has now led to the evolution of these godly-like men who are becoming less like your average man or viewer. So generally speaking, there is definitely this universal idea of masculinity, which is to be macho, tough, or strong. There are positive traits to masculinity and it shouldn't be completely demonized. And I think it's so important to address that there are toxic masculinity traits and mannerisms that are normalized and quite frankly encouraged, such as repressing and hiding emotions and emphasizing to look and be a certain way. Or maybe it's because some straight men think it's feminine to recycle. It's really important to put social constructions and social norms and masculinity into perspective. In the 18th century, it was perfectly masculine to wear a pink suit with floral embroidery. And in the 1920s, the color pink had working class connotations. Egyptian men used to use makeup for masculinity and Roman men used to use pigments for cheeks and skin lightening powders and painted their nails with pig fat and blood. And the men in a nomadic tribe Wadabe spent hours doing their hair and makeup just to impress women. There's a long history of Chinese men with long nails as it was a symbol of wealth and showed that they did no manual labor. And for centuries, so many traditions and cultures have men using skirts. And from the 80s to the 90s, crop tops were considered fashionable and were even wore by straight men like Will Smith and Mark Wahlberg. But now, imagine if a guy or a boy today liked pink, wore makeup, had long nails, wore a skirt, and a crop top. I guess that's the world we live in, right? So the issue is that a lot of these men and young males, they have this aesthetic aspiration to look like what they see on the media from their role models, but not everyone, especially young boys, are aware of the dark reality behind what they see on screen. Extreme dieting and training is often very common to achieve these bodies. There are extreme weight loss programs, strict diets that include no alcohol, no carbs, and quite often it includes starving. There's a lot of intense, difficult workout routines, which are also generally over-exercising. A lot of time and commitment at the gym which leaves no space for much social life. <laughs> For a full week, he only consumed water and yangang, a Korean sweet jelly made of red beans. He went on an extremely strict diet, which consisted of eating only two blocks of tofu a day. He also exercised for six hours a day as well. Which is why a lot of these K-pop stars are always overworked, exhausted, and quite often faint on stage. When I was done with that movie, I don't ever want to be in that good of shape again. <laughs> really? It's like, it's, I was so, it was so hard. It's just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's just not real. And like, take care of your heart, take care of your brain. You're good. I'm so happy that I'm eating carbs again. <laughs> like, I, was, I went like years without eating carbs. When I shot Baywatch, I didn't have a carb for like six months. I almost lost my mind. You're, you need this. It's so good. 
A lot of these actors and male models are dehydrated beforehand, meaning they can't have water for several days. Quite often there's makeup and tanning and shadow definition done by professional stylists with post editing and altering. And there's so many tricks and angles to make the body look more defined. There are even apps targeting to make you look more masculine. There are so many apps and filters that alter yourself so much to the point where you become almost unrecognizable. And most of these people have doctors, plastic surgeons, nutritionists, personal trainers, facilities, and they're being paid to achieve this body. And if they're honest about it, quite a few of them take steroids themselves to achieve that look. And what's so crazy about it is that most of these men do it particularly for a brief period of time, whether it's for shooting one scene or a bodybuilding contest. There is just so much more that people have to know, especially younger boys, to understand the reality and the pressure and the strict routines these men have to achieve that body that they see in the media. So many male celebrities have opened up about their struggles with eating disorders, body image issues. Throughout my career, I've lived with an eating disorder called bulimia. And despite being in the public eye, for years I've managed to keep it hidden. I became known as a fat cricketer, really. That was horrible. That's when I started doing it. So now, I feel like I'm more appealing now. Why? Because yeah, I'm lighter. Mm. So they would tease me, they comments every now and then, but you could feel that. It I would hurts. Yeah, just laugh along, just to. My friends also like had girlfriends and all that, and I did it. You know, so I thought like maybe that was the reason why, because of because of my skin. Going into my eighth grade year of junior high school, that's when it really started. So um, my way of thinking about it was, if I'm going to get a girlfriend, I got to have a six pack. And so I thought that if I didn't eat anything, I kind of progressively got into anorexia, um, ultimately into binging and purging and, and into bulimia as well. My dad was a, uh, a star athlete in high school, and and he'd always be like, "Are you? What do you do? Are you not eating? Are you not eating enough?" And he'd like just put food in my face and I'd be like, I eat everything. I had a problem with overeating and I would overeat and I'd go to the gym and I'd gorge myself trying to get bigger. But, and I did, but I didn't get taller. When I was a kid playing with my action man toys and whatnot, they're, they're all got, they all got like 10 packs and they all look shredded that that does not give like a normal guy body confidence you know the mass media social media blockbusters industries like health and fitness sell this ideal male beauty standard telling you this is how you should look like this is how you'll get the girl and this is how you'll feel good about yourself men getting treatment for eating disorders increased by 70 percent between 2010 and 2016 quite often there's a lot of bullying and pressure from people around you telling you that you're not like what they see on the screen you're too short, you're too skinny, you're too fat, not manly enough. And one of the issues with trying to achieve this ideal male beauty standard is that it can get too obsessive and too unhealthy, which can lead to pushing unhealthy extremes, punishing gym routines, unhealthy eating habits such as strict dieting, starving, skipping meals, overeating and purging, drug abuse such as laxatives and steroids, and quite often can lead to body image and mental health issues such as low self-esteem, anxiety disorder, depression, body dysmorphia, and more commonly recently, muscle dysmorphia. With uh, the idea that one isn't big enough, isn't muscular enough, and that's causing them great levels of anxiety, profound depression, and that the depression becomes so severe that that could lead them to take their own lives. It, it, it boggles my mind because I myself don't like what I'm seeing because I've just critiqued it so much. There are days I, I feel disgusted, and those days happen when I have not been consistent with the work that is required of me to reach a goal. Rising steroid rates. That rising use is being driven by predominantly boys and men who aren't happy with their appearance and want to use steroids to bulk up. Because I didn't think I was, you know, good enough and if I was going to be judged on um, how I look or my body then I had to be perfect. Everything had to be perfect. Look in the mirror and go, no, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. Men kind of have this like um, stigma if they if they say like oh yeah like I'm I'm insecure about like the way I look like if they if they speak out there's kind of this like oh yeah you're not a man you know yeah yeah seems to be weak for real. We need to destigmatize mental health and body image issues for men and boys. It's much easier to brush off these issues, which leads to a lot of men being confused and scared to open up about their feelings, so they repress their emotions, which can commonly lead to depression. 
There are a lot of boys and men, whether athletes or celebrities, regardless of their sexuality, who go through these mental health and body image issues. Talking about it can really help and seeking for help and treatment does not make you any less of a man. Knowing your self-worth is so much easier said than done. Don't get me wrong, I am all for a healthier lifestyle and improving your health and your body. I don't want to sugarcoat and promote an unhealthy weight, whether it be obese or underweight. But I think it's so important to remember that you do not need to seek for validation elsewhere, whether it's from dating a girl or being in a relationship or getting compliments about your appearance. To simply be yourself is more than enough. There are so many different bodies that don't fit the media standard. There is a wide range of all realistic body sizes, shapes, shades of skin tones of all ages. There is nothing wrong with having face and body acne scars. Not everyone has to have a chiseled physique, a sharp jawline or perfect luscious hair. There are so many beautiful shapes of noses and faces. It's so important that we males need to speak up and demand for a wider and realistic representation of the male beauty and that we get the same body positivity support that females do at the end of the day the real question that you must ask yourself is